Hi, this is Noah with Automus, and in this video, we'll look at a template for how to use PowerShell within a System Center Orchestrator runbook. If you've had experience running PowerShell within Orchestrator runbooks, you may have run into several limitations that Orchestrator has with respect to PowerShell. The most important one is that Orchestrator by default runs all scripts in a PowerShell version 2 session, which means that any of the newer features of PowerShell that have been released since version 2, which is a while ago, are not able to be run in those scripts. It also runs everything in a 32-bit process, which may not be as commonly uh, a pitfall, but sometimes you have modules or scripts that need a 64-bit process in order to work correctly. It also doesn't keep detailed logs for you or necessarily handle errors in the most robust way. So the method I'm going to show is how to get all of these things. Um, a PowerShell version that's the latest installed on the Runbook server in a 64-bit process with detailed logs, and you still get to publish your data from your scripts from any variables that you may have. Briefly, just to visualize how this works, we have Orchestrator running a Runbook, and that's a job. That job runs in a process that if it encounters a .NET script activity with a PowerShell in it, it will spawn a new process to run that script. And that's where we have PowerShell version 2 and a 32-bit process. What we're going to do from there is we're going to call invoke command, which is a PowerShell commandlet, to run code in a new session. And that's the second session at the top that is the latest version of PowerShell and a 64-bit process. Everything we want to do, we'll do there, and then we'll return our results back to the .NET script activity, and from there, that will in turn publish our results back to the Runbook job for later subscription on the data bus. There are more details for your reading pleasure on the solution page, but with that brief overview, I thought I'd go through an example to show how this works in practice. So here's the scenario we'll be working with. Let's say that I have developed a script in PowerShell, this script goes and gets the weather for a list of zip codes, and then it saves that list of weather data into a CSV file in a directory that we specify. Pretty simple script, uses a nice um, web service that's available to us online, and all we have to do is give it a zip code and it gives us back things like temperature and wind speed and pressure and all that good stuff. And if we just run this, here within the script editor, we want to make sure this works. Um, we said output directory is under C weather, so let's go take a look in there. And if we look, what we've just generated, we have this weather file with a timestamp on it. Popping that open, we have a CSV file, and it has a bunch of different properties. It looks like we've had different states, cities, cloudy, sunny, mostly sunny different temperatures, and so on. So that looks good. This is what we want to actually run and produce, but we don't want to just do it in a script. We would like to do this in a runbook that, let's say, runs every hour and produces this file for some reason or other. Well, our first inclination might be, let's just head over to Orchestrator and create ourselves a runbook to do just that. So we head over to Orchestrator, and we're just going to create a quick runbook that gets the weather for us using this script. So we create a new runbook. Let's give it a name, say, Get Current Weather. And this runbook is only going to do one thing, which is to run that PowerShell script that we just showed. So we have the .NET script activity available to us, and we'll go ahead and pull one of those in and I'll open it up. I say this is, of course, PowerShell. And let's just test it in the simplest possible case by copying the script from the script editor and pasting it over into our script uh, field here. So that's literally just the same script. And if we just want to go ahead and run it, we want to hopefully just get the same result that we have our file generated in our weather directory. But it looks like the runbook failed for some reason. So if we open this up and we look at the status, it says failed. And then notice the error summary here. It says the term invoke web request is not recognized as the name of a commandlet. 
which is kind of perplexing since presumably Orchestrator doesn't have amnesia. So what the heck is going on here? Why doesn't it recognize the fact that we're trying to just use this commandlet that ships with PowerShell? And here's just one case where we run into the limitation of PowerShell 2. There was no such thing as invoke web request in PowerShell 2. This first was released in PowerShell version 3. So we can't actually run this script in Orchestrator as it stands because it uses, according to Orchestrator, newfangled commandlets that didn't exist according to when it was born. So we're going to have to go ahead now and use an alternative way to run this script if we actually want to use invoke web requests like we're doing here. And that method is going to be to use a template script that we can put our script here into. And that's what we've downloaded from the page where you're watching this video. I have uh, two things. One is the orchestrator runbook file, which imports the runbook where this example lives. But we also have just the template PowerShell script itself. So let's go ahead and start. I think the easiest way is to start with this template PowerShell file. So I'll just copy this and I'll bring it over into my directory. And I'm just going to go ahead and modify this to put our stuff into it. Um, I'll go ahead and open this template. And here we can see it. It's actually fairly verbose. There's a lot of comments and such, and it's actually some example stuff in here that we'll want to remove. But it provides us this kind of framework or structure in which we can run our code and, and get the results that we want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look through here and see a few things. First, our inputs for the data bus will come in at the top. And those can either be hard-coded values, but more likely they're going to be values from the data bus or values from a variable in Orchestrator. Then we have those getting added to an arguments array and a new session getting created on this local computer, which is the runbook server. We pass our arguments into the session using invoke command, and then we run everything starting here. We start running this, and this is what actually is in that script uh, session that I was talking about earlier, where it's an external new session. This is going to be our new fancy version of PowerShell, and it's 64-bit process. So. What we want to do is put whatever stuff that we have to, to accomplish, it goes inside of this try block. And you can see that we're adding some things to the trace log right away when we get this into this try block. We're starting out just saying, hey, we're now executing in a new PowerShell session. We're going to show the version so somebody can see it in the logs. We're going to say, hey, we're this user currently, which is probably going to be the runbook server uh, account. And then we say, here's the parameter values we received. We, we have some boilerplate in there now, but we're going to update that. But the actual work of the script goes here, as this comment aptly uh, shows us. So let's put in our work right there. I'm actually going to copy everything in here and put it. Now, I'm going to leave these alone for a second. These are sort of our inputs, but this is the actual script, if we consider that's doing the work. So I'm going to put this right in here and just overwrite. I'm going to delete all this stuff right here, and I'm going to paste that in. And then we'll just do a little bit of formatting, and I'll just append to my log. I'm going to be requesting weather data. Now the script is here. Uh, the work is going to be done within this session. And the only other thing I have to do is get the inputs to it in there. And that's actually probably the most confusing part of all of this, is that we have to do kind of some shuttling of information. First, something comes from the runbook into the activity, and then we have to shovel that from the activity into the script session and then bring it back again. So let's start at the top. We want to bring in two pieces of information. One is the zip code list, and we'll put that here. Um, and the other is the output directory. And actually, let's just take the whole thing here for now. So I'm going to put that right there. 
So this is what, um, in our test, this is in our test environment, the easiest way to me to develop is in the script editor itself before we even go to orchestrator. Make sure the script works in the script editor first, and then we can just replace a few things as we paste it into orchestrator. So I'm going to start off with my zip code list and my output directory, and then I need to update those to get those into our script session. So you notice uh, line 19 is where we add something to our arguments array. That was our boilerplate name of our variables, but now we have new ones. So I'm just going to take the zip code list and output directory, and I'm going to put those onto the arguments array. So now our arguments array should have two things, the zip code list and the output directory. And then we also have to do that. It's going to get passed into invoke command here as the array. But then within the session, the session defines, hey, I'm expecting some parameters. And the parameters, I'm going to give them a name as they come in. Um, so we're just going to give them the same names as they were coming into the runbook activity. We'll just use those exact same names within the session. Even though they're two separate environments altogether, that'll just make it easy for us to read. All right, so now we've got the parameters and the information coming in as inputs. We come down, we do our work, and then at the end of this, we say we finished our work. Uh, it looks like in this template, I put everything worked equals true, which is just a dummy result. Um, we'll leave that for now and just make sure that we know that this is just going to be true every time in our scenario. But what you would actually want to do is if you have some way to determine whether your script succeeded or not, that's what you would determine in this portion. And so let's say that I knew that uh, I had 10 different zip codes and I expected weather information for all 10. And if I didn't get weather information for one of them or more, I would say that our overall result has failed. Even though it sort of worked, it didn't throw any exceptions, but for my purposes, I don't I don't think that's a good result. I could say I could do something here to make sure to check that case and then report it as failed or success if they all worked. So just keep that in mind um, as you go through this in a real world scenario. And then the rest of this can just remain as is. We're going to um, get everything into a final result array, and then we're going to publish it back to uh, the activity. In our case, we're not returning anything. All we do is we save all of the stuff that we get back from the web service into a file, and then we're done. So we're not actually providing any information back over and above just whether it was successful or not. So we don't have really a custom variable or anything like that, so I'll just remove that from here. And at this point, we should be able just to run this script and see what it does. I'm going to save it as a different file so we can keep track of it. I'm going to say it's save weather orchestrator. So if I run this, and I am in an administrator session within the ISE, which is important. Otherwise, you may get access denied when you run this method. We can see that it does return. Uh, let's go over and check whether we got a file. It looks like I did get a file. And here it is. The boss will be very pleased. So with that, now we want to get this working in Orchestrator. We know it works in ISE. We know it works as just PowerShell. But can we get it to run in Orchestrator, given that it has this fancy new invoke web requests commandlet? Well, the way we do this is actually we want to run the same run.net script activity type, but we're just going to run it with our code here. Um, easiest way to do that, really, is Let's get rid of this old one that we have. And the quickest way is to grab the one that's in the example that you imported from this file, which was here, this template runbook. I imported that, and it shows up under here as this PowerShell best practice example. Um, if you open this up, you can see the same script is inside this PowerShell activity already. Um, if you go through it, you'll, you would notice it's all the same. It just happens to be put into a script. And there's one more, a little bit more work has already been done here, which is 
published data has already been defined. The result status, error message, trace log, and an optional custom published data is all already defined, which is nice because we don't we're gonna have to do that if we create our activities from scratch. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna copy this guy. And I'm gonna come back out to my runbook and paste it. And if I open it up, I can see everything is still there, which is awesome. Um, in publish data, remember I said we're not publishing any custom uh, variables, so I'm just going to remove that one. These three are always published. And then we can put our script right in here and just overwrite this. So if I go back and get our Save Weather Orchestrator, I'm going to copy all of this and going to go back to Orchestrator. I'm going to get rid of all of that by deleting it. So I just have an empty script and then I'm going to go ahead and paste it back in. And going back to the top, we can see now everything is in there now. It's good to go, except for the fact that uh, we have the zip code list hard coded, which is probably not ideal. That may change in the future. Maybe the output directory needs to be configurable. We don't want to have this stuff hard coded in there. We want to either provide it as a parameter in a runbook, or maybe we just want to pull it from a configurable variable, which is what I'm going to do. So let's save this for the moment and go over to a global setting and let's create a couple new variables to hold our configuration. One, we're just going to call the zip code list. And actually, let's call it the weather zip code list. And the values are just going to go from here. Let's just pull these example values in for the moment. And we don't need the quotes, just the string itself. Now it's going to just be a comma separated list. So that's that. And then we also just want to do the same thing for the output directory. So we'll call it the weather file output directory and I'm also going to just take the value from here put that in now we have our variables and with that we can actually just consume those directly in our runbook so instead of hard coding that I'm gonna go subscribe to my variable value this is my zip code list right there and Output directory comes from here. All right, so that's going to come in from the variable at runtime. It's going to get passed into the script. The script's going to run, return back any errors or otherwise that occur. And hopefully, we get a file output in our directory. So let's go ahead and clean that out before we start, just to make sure that we notice whether something gets created. Okay, I'm going to check it back in, and I'm going to go ahead and run. And we can see it looks a little better. We at least got some green. If we open this and look at what came out, uh, we forgot one piece, which is we didn't turn on any activity logging. So we don't see the trace log and the status that came back in here because it wasn't recorded. Um, the way we want to do that is actually to go into our properties of the runbook and logging, and we're going to hit this first one, the activity-specific published data. In the future, we'll see the actual results in there. But if I look over here, it looks like, in fact, we did get our weather report. All the same stuff is in there, and uh, that's all good. So let's just run it one more time, though, to make sure that we get the published data, and you can actually see in here how the trace log works. So I'm going to go run this a second time. And we have another success, popping back open the log. This time I see there's more stuff. One is error message, which happens to be empty. If there's no error, there would be no error message. So it's just going to be a blank field. Result status gives us the string success. And trace log gives us a whole list of all of the things that happened one by one. The best way to view this, by the way, is just go ahead and copy it all. So if you select it all and copy it, and then go over into WordPad, WordPad will display it in the best way. 
So we have the start of the script. It's now in a PowerShell version 4 session, which is actually what I've got installed on my Runbook server. It's running as the orchestrator service. Um, the values that we received, we actually did not update these in our logging to be correct, but those would have showed the correct values coming in. We say we're requesting the weather data, and then we finished, and we're exiting with success. So that's what that looks like. And this is completely configurable. All you do, if you want more or less of this information in the trace, you just update uh, the data append log function throughout and just put whatever you want it to say. So that's what these are right here. So we could have put one, for example, at the end of this and say, you know, finished weather data request. Now we're going to write this out to a file. So the advantage of this is the more granular you get, the easier it is when an error occurs in a specific part. Like if we got through all the requests, but then writing it out to the file actually caused an exception because the file is in use or uh, access was denied or whatever, we would see that specifically in the log, it would say, uh, we got to assert, we got all the weather data, but now in the, during the action saving to CSV file, an exception was thrown, and here is the error that we, we got out of that. And then just to finish this up so it's more or less a real example, let's say that we want to make this into a useful thing. So let's create another runbook that's going to be um, our scheduler, and we'll call this get hourly weather. And all we're going to do in this is monitor or I'm sorry, we're going to schedule every hour. We're going to, going to do every hour, and we'll say we'll start it on the hour, and we will go ahead and run our weather run book. Which is what we just created. It's going to be get current weather. And we don't have to supply any parameters because those are coming in through variables. So with that, we will have every hour, we're going to be saving a new weather report into our folder. So that's the gist of getting this working with this method. Again, just to recap, the way we went about this is, number one, we started with a script that we know works, the simplest possible script in the normal PowerShell, nothing fancy. Then we used our template PowerShell file that we downloaded from this example, and we use that template to put our script into this overall framework, just replacing the parts where we needed to do our work for the script. And then we had to do the work of the plumbing to get the inputs from the runbook or from orchestrator into the script, and then back out of it if we had outputs at the end. Once we had this working and we got the the behavior that we wanted to out of the script, only then does orchestrator actually come into play. And then we go to orchestrator, and you could start with a blank dot run dot net ex, uh, script activity and build your own, making sure that you define the published data appropriately, or you could come into this template runbook and just copy, literally copy this one that's already configured into your runbook and then just replace the whole thing. Um, with what you did in the script editor. So I hope that helps. I hope this makes sense and it's useful. I've found this to be a very effective way to use PowerShell in Orchestrator, even though it is a little bit uh, more code in your scripts and it, it makes it a little bit harder to keep track of what's going on. But once you get used to it, I think that uh, it's worked pretty well and you do make sure that you're always gonna get the behavior that you want. So none of this no commandlets not recognized, no 32-bit uh, you know, mismatch in terms of what files are able to be used and so on. So I hope that helps. And if you have any problems or questions or concerns or anything else, go ahead and get in touch, and we'll just see what we can do. Thanks.